Welcome everyone. Uh, once again, we're at our Inside the Box lecture series and the title of the semester is A Place to Live. We have a special guest, a dear friend, uh, an amazing designer with us tonight, Calvin Sow. And he's going to be talking about creating the context for a new community. The description of that title is desi designing a new neighborhood to optimize community well-being begins with examining which programmatic elements are ideally necessary and desirable. And at the same time, envisioning complementary interrelationships between programs that might lead to best synergies. Calvin was uh, graduated from UC Berkeley before receiving his Master of Architecture degree from Harvard GSD. He forged his own path by founding Tsao McCowan in 1985 with his partner and fellow visionary, Zach Cowan. He has orchestrated built environments across a variety of scales and locales with current projects, including the reconfiguration of the National Palace Museum of Taiwan, plus additions, and in Atlanta, working with the university and their private partner to develop a community of 3,000 residents, half of which are designated to be affordable. He's done a number of other significant works, such as the Sunbrella headquarters in North Carolina, Shangya at one hotel in Suhao, China, the renovation of the Jewish, Jewish Museum permanent collection in New York, Brower. Park Library in Brooklyn, um, the Jian Fu Palace Museum in the Forbidden City, Beijing. This just goes on and on, like amazing things. And even a lipstick case for Shu Erumura. Sao envisions his role as that of a cultural mediator, striving to harness global experience and technology in order to express the essence of local cultures and contexts. For me, that's the most important statement. I really think that <laughs> defines you. He has taught at the Harvard GSD, Cooper Union, Syracuse, Parse and Parsons. He is board chair of the American Academy of Rome. And I have to stop there just to say that Calvin and his family are doing amazing things there right now. Um, expanding the program in a really worldly way, and he can tell you more about that at another time, but I'm, I'm just amazed at what you're doing and, and we'll all be grateful for it, I know. Um, he's the former Vice President of Design Excellence at AIA New York, Center for Architecture, President Emeritus and board member of the Architectural League of New York, along with his partner, Zach, has received the 2022 AIA New York Medal of Honor. Congratulations. 2012 <laughs> recipient of National Design Award from the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum. Legacy Award from the Museum of the Chinese in America, to name just a few. So <laughs> welcome, Calvin, and thank you so much for doing this. I hand this over to you. Thank you, Carol. Boy, I certainly... <laughs> make you a, a, a pronounce a mouthful of very unpronounceable <laughs> Sorry <names>. for that. <laughs> They're really hard in multiple languages. But anyway, thank you. I, 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 that sounds like someone else when you're saying all these <laughs> things that I've done. Because in the end, you know, it's, it's just a day at a time trying to do the best that you can. So I want to thank you, of course, for including me in this lecture series, Inside the Box. And of course, thank, I'm very grateful to the School of Visual Arts for me to, to allow me to participate in this. So since it's called Inside the Box, let's start with the box. How big is that box? How, what's inside that box? And why are those things outside the box? So <laughs> let's explore that. So um, I think, in fact, uh, the one thing that I know that's inside my box for sure, three things. One, of course, I share with all of you, which is the love for architecture and design and interiors and exterior of, of our built environment. But I think most, but the thing that is most precious to me inside my little box is a sense that I feel that we can do something for our community for our 
are people, wherever they are, how do you make people feel that they belong in the environment that we help shape? Um, so I'm going to show you guys uh, two related projects, um, in fact. And it was uh, two projects that we had the privilege of starting way before where architects are invited to participate, which is in the programming. Usually, you know, we, we're hired to design this a high rise building or a hotel or a museum or whatever it is. But usually we are not asked, should there be a museum? Should there be an a, 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 a apartment? Or if there are, what should they have and what should they come with? And so um, and that's why this the, the, the topic of this is trying to create an environment, a community through thinking about what a community means and how we can create a brief, a program in the for design that can make it not only beautiful, the way we of course can help, but want to make beautiful, but also so useful, compelling and appropriate for the situation or the location or the culture that it is in. So we've, we've been working quite a bit in China, not surprising since there's so many opportunities in a country in the throes of uh, growth and, and, and expansion. But we also realized that the change is so sudden. In fact, we were working on the Jianfu Palace, which is a, a reconstruction of a, a, a pavilion in the Forbidden City, and that's historical preservation, historical reconstruction, uh, meaning like trying to finish a, a country's history. Um, the Chinese believe that the, the Forbidden City is in a microcosm, the all of China, and when a piece is missing, it's not complete. And so the 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 just the, to build, rebuild this has much more symbolic, as much symbolic meaning as trying to just um, build something to to be used. Uh, from that experience, we started being engaged in a variety of different projects, all of whom which we start to feel something lacking in in contributing to a rapidly modernizing, uh, urbanizing uh, country, uh, society in the throes of uh, evolution, quick evolution. I mean, China modernized within maybe less than 50 years. And as you all know, it went from a very quiet, simple uh, communist country that start to embrace not also Western and uh, ways, but of course it's much more complicated and complex because China has its own um, heritage that they're beginning to lose the same way we as in the West lost quite a bit with industrialization of 150, over a hundred years ago. Um, and, again, learning from history, learning from Western history, we know that even as you embrace the future, in this case, uh, industrialization, and, and in China's case, of course, uh, technology and new economic means, something is left behind, and what, which is the wellness of their society. And a lot of housing that there was built uh, was just to accommodate a sudden influx of need and it doesn't really quite consider thoroughly how to preserve the Chinese social heritage in the modern society. So we had a wonderful opportunity to be invited to think about that. And the first was to actually uh, try to find a center for an existing neighborhood in Shanghai, uh, where a lot of new buildings are going up and there are no 
really social provisions that really would tie this, this little neighborhood together. And so the first um, thing that I want to show you is, the, is this project, it's called The Living Room. And the name says it all, it's the neighborhood's living room. And um, what you're seeing here is actually one of the components in this living room, which is their eating eateries. And we actually flip the kitchen to the street. And so what you're seeing is a restaurant that's turned inside out uh, and allow you to look at the inner workings. And also it came in a kind of funny way because uh, hygiene has always been an obsession with, with modernizing China. And, and they, so they were saying, well, you know, a good restaurant should, should have the highest standards of hygiene. And we took that and ran with it. I said, okay, if you want to hide, well, let's put the kitchen outside so we can see how, how clean and well organized our kitchen is. So come on in. So this uh, living room, I just want to show you the components. This is the ground floor. And uh, this is made up of two, um, two different existing buildings. And we linked them together and actually created a courtyard in the middle, which is a classic Chinese building typology. And it's reached through this in this corridor from the outside. Can you see my um, first? Yeah. And yeah. so what you saw earlier was this piece here. That's the kitchen. And so you come in and the kitchen, the rest, the, the eatery is called Thought for Food. It's a play on food for thought. <laughs> um, because I think language sometimes could also inspire. And, and, and then with, combined with the eatery, the eatery is actually to serve some of the other functions. One of the functions is a children's early learning through play. That's the pink part, the salmon pink part. And so the, this eatery, as you know, the Chinese culture of food is a community, is a very important thing. It's not only for, for, for enjoyment of taste and cuisine, but it's also uh, where you commune. Families come together, all kinds of meals. Let's have a meal together is a very important thing. And then finally, it's a little retail uh, shop that sells a lot of the uh, things that we, we actually use. So for example, you can buy all the knives and forks and silverware from the restaurant, also some of the foods, et cetera. And I will get back to you there. Um, and um, then we go upstairs, more children's, um, children's uh, learning programs. The yellow is public circulation slash communities uh, kind of social space. And then, this, this piece here are the wellness program. That, that has uh, East-West Medicine Clinic, as well as what we call uh, family dialogue spaces, where uh, in this culture, in our culture, would be called psych psychiatry. But there, we, that's not a very pleasant name. So it's called family dialogue rooms. Um, to address a lot of social issues where uh, families are sometimes split up. Uh, the husband may work in another another city. Um, a modern, modern um, the wife is now also working for the first time. Uh, so there's a lot of family issues that are new to them. And finally, on the second floor, the, this is the roof above the, the children's learning program downstairs. And that is a roof urban farm. The third floor is then, this is a, a, a community room lecture hall. And then this is the physical part of the wellness, yoga rooms, exercise rooms, 
and then of course changing rooms and then a creative therapy art therapy space here so all those pieces so you can learn how to draw or learn how to finger paint i don't know learn how to weave learn how to actually do, uh, do uh, psychotherapy uh, meaning act, you know work on theater therapy and then of course yoga and pilates and and tai chi and so on and then this room of course you can use for meetings and other social functions and finally the roof of this is also a, a social function so um we'll show you now some of the visuals responding to these various combinations which serves very current uh, I think needs for for that community. So this is the entry. So you come in through the street through this social public space. You see all the bridges. They they're and angles and so on. Not because I'm trying to be a deconstructionist, but actually to bridge two old buildings with its structure where they are to connect. They they can't help but being not orthogonal to the design. Um, this is the central courtyard, where social functions on, on weekends, we have, we call uh, uh, retail mistake swap meet, where people will buy things that they didn't want to wear, or, and they will bring it and they will swap. And they are, of course, also um, uh, a, a local um, uh, um, farmer's market or children at play. Um, so here, you the pink wall is looking at the children's early learning, and before the the, the this glass wall with what looked like a movie it actually is uh, a, a a wall with a with a film on it, so that uh, when you look one way, I think you, Carol, you know that very well. You can see inside, but when you look at the other, turn, you turn it on, and it becomes translucent. And at night. When there are no kids, no children in in that space, we 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 actually uh, show films on it for the for the for the courtyard, and so you know this is one of the scenes where kids are getting out of control in the courtyard. Uh, this is their the children's library, and this is the kitchen. As you can see, when now you're looking back out from the kitchen to the street. And it's a very, very uh, busy uh, kitchen. And the, and the eatery is broken up by several, several components. This is a deli where people can go grab and go. And then of course you have to have a cocktail lounge or shoju lounge or whatever, whatever your poison is. And then uh, a variety of different seating arrangements. You've got the, the, of course, um, the long community table. In the back here is a, is a booth. This is the, the, the desk, the long community table. And then of course, the kind of cafe, uh, trattoria, uh, main dining space. Um, but at the same time, of course, there will be an actual bar. It's connecting to it. And then beyond that is another space, which is for experimentation. We actually invite a lot of chefs around to do chefs showcase nights. And um, okay, here's a bar. And this is a, a call. It's a, it's it's another part of the dining where it's only open at night, and it's for uh, showcasing, as I said, different chefs in the round town. Staircase, staircases and other corridors, we pay a lot of attention to, to making sure that they are actually places that people meet by chance and have conversations, creating you know, all sorts of uh, possible uh, places to tarry. And these are the what I call the family dialogue rooms where they come with a of a, a life coach and so they can talk about their marital issues or their family issues or children issues with, uh, in a safe safe enclave this is a view from the top of the roof looking down to the 
to the courtyard that you saw earlier, and then to the uh, the rooftop farmhouse. And this grows enough vegetables um, for to supply the our just our own restaurant. This is one of our staff picking something. I think it's mint. This is the community room, which can be reconfigured. Um, it has, they can do uh, re, uh, distant learning. Uh, it's live streamed to all kinds of different uh, parts of the world. We actually have a program uh, with, uh, with, with Harvard Business School because they, a lot of people want to learn more about business, which I can understand. Uh, or they can have a, a, a lot of clubs nearby would lend this space, borrow the space to have meetings. Um, as I said earlier, uh, designing these sort of institutional connector space uh, is very, I think, just as important as designing uh, designated functions. So these are connecting corridors. Um, it's, oops, right here somewhere. Um, another view of the corridor, as you can see, the corridor circularly expands into different seatings. Uh, and then this is the, the exercise room, yoga. And we actually retain some part of the existing old building uh, when, when, whenever we can that's ours uh, stable and doesn't need repair. Remodeling, and even, um, of course, I think total consideration for every aspect of design is important. So it's a changing room, uh, and these we found this back-to-back uh, -back sink from a flea market, and we thought it was wonderful because you know you're not just looking at a wall; you can actually uh, talk to your colleagues. And this is the uh, creative therapy room where, you know, impromptu, uh, improvisational classes, uh, weaving classes, et cetera, et cetera. And then finally on the roof, uh, we conduct a lot of uh, you know, activities like outdoor yoga. And so that proved to be really, really uh, successful because uh, the neighborhood people all came came and to to a point that we actually have to uh, start thinking about uh, creating um, schedule for for people to 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 come in and it's, it's not big enough because we didn't expect it to be so successful. So emboldened by this and with more resources the with the Suzhou government Suzhou is a uh, equally pretty large city, um, an hour and 15 minutes west, uh, west southwest of Shanghai. It's very famous for, uh, it's, it's, it's actually the birthplace of the, uh, my, my mentor, I M Pei, uh, whose family had a very well known uh, uh, scholar garden there. And, and currently, uh, it, is, it is one of the oldest uh, continually inhabited cities in China. In fact, older than Shanghai, but it's inland and it's uh, actually uh, has a very famous lake, uh, which produces a very delectable crab called a hairy crab, uh, which I think uh, students from, from China would probably know. And so we partner up with the local government to create actually a community with housing. So we brought some of these programs that we experimented in Shanghai, and then we laminated with it with a series of different housing. And the concept of the housing there is actually, you know, here we always have like affordable housing, luxury housing, uh, you know, market rate housing. But what we want to do here is actually to see whether we can have a full-on community with different kinds of economic and social classes coexisting with one common goal, which is to live well and 
in a in a peaceful environment, but full of um, functions that they would find it very very uh, useful in their daily lives. Unfortunately, um, we inherit this very strange piece of landfill that the government gave us. That was the only option we have. So we're going to have to make lemonade out of lemons because they thought they were very inspired by the palm in somewhere, Saudi Arabia, right? Uh, in the Middle East. And, and landfill is a very toxic and uh, um, um, kind of function. So we took actually a year to, to, to clean up the water and uh, reinstate some of the uh, native habitat. But having said that, we do have this very strange uh, shape, but we make the best use of it. And so let me explain that, that we have a village center here full of, which has um, attached uh, townhouses and apartments and, uh, and some, uh, and landscape of all course would always be something that's very important, which I will touch on later. Uh, and the, then the children's early learning uh, kindergarten, um, a life learning center. Uh, but this time the life learning center has the benefit of having a hostel on top of it so that people from outside this neighborhood can also take advantage of the programs. And some of the programs include a, a local supported um, art gallery or create, create craft and arts gallery where people who can make things and sell it. A, uh, a performance center where people can put on plays and concerts. And then, of course, as a revenue stream, what we call it the town hall, which is a large space that they could that we can use to um, do conferences. Because in order to make the learning center economically viable, just to serve this neighborhood is not enough. And so, uh, it has a, a tiered lecture hall. It has all sorts of classes like. Uh, ceramic studio, art studio, music studio, dance studio, theater, uh, rehearsal space, and meeting rooms. So it is actually to um, partner up with a um, conference center who um, actually can help financially support these programs. So with that in mind, we realize that not only like all um, so communities, you need a revenue stream to in order to make it work. And you can't just provide all these luxuries and not have something that, that give it a lifeline. So the, the, the um, uh, hostel is not very profit, profitable, but, but having a conference center is, and the hostel, combined with a regular five-star hotel slash retreat center, wellness retreat center, offers all the, the, the infrastructure for a proper conference space. On top of that, underneath the housing is a food hall, a, a large food service center, uh, surrounding a, um, basically, again, a larger scale courtyard a, a pl plaza or piazza uh, in the middle here. So I'm rambling a little bit because this is so hard to do it in a linear fashion. Uh, so I'm, excuse me if I'm jumping around a bit. Uh, so, so this uh, hotel is, of course, because this is a, not a very central location, a, a regular hotel won't work. So this is a what we call a wellness retreat, which means it has all the medical component and the health and uh, relaxation, like a resort kind of uh, environment there. So that uh, I always feel that one neighborhood should have permanent population and some form of transient population, not different from New York, which is what makes New York so vibrant, is that there are always foreigners coming in interacting with residents. And so, so hotel rep to me represents that kind of activity, which is bringing 
a new fresh blood into the community. And here we have uh, freestanding houses. So going back to housing, how we, when I like to address the idea of uh, multivalent housing is that you can have very inexpensive, affordable housing, and that you can also have very ex uh, luxury housing. And sometimes they go hand in hand. One support, definitely the luxury housing's economics help support and make it viable for a developer to do affordable housing. You know, and we have that here, right? Except the developers maybe don't do it so well. Um, and so here they have medium size or medium to large size attached townhouses. These are friends, freestanding houses. These are small attached townhouses. And then here we have uh, medium size freestanding houses, large freestanding houses, small freestanding houses, and then more for small freestanding houses. And there, of course, you know, one has to be very commercial. This is has the best view. So of course, all the extravagance goes there. So the first thing we do is create the ground. And so landscape is the most important thing that sit, helps situate all the architecture. And so um, sustainability is very important. Uh, part of our endeavor. And so because we're near a lake, there's a lot of river rocks that we can harvest from the nearby. So we're able to, with the help of, you know, old craftsmanship in the, this part of, of this uh, China, because Suzhou is very well known for their gardens. There's a lot of great um, landscape um, um, laborers and craftspeople. And we also look at different ways of doing roads and walkways and paths, some of them either green. And these are done, of course, with uh, a, ma a, a mat underneath it so that you can actually, a fire truck can go on, drive onto it without damaging it. Um, but there are paved roads. So these are different views of uh, different uh, locations of the housing. These are the, the streets um, around this, the smaller freestanding houses. And these are the uh, larger townhouses, which are actually single loaded roads. So the other side is actually landscape. There are no, um, as is this one. And then of course, you know, integrating landscape and, and, and architecture is, is something uh, one does as, a, as, as one should. And, and they slice this through so that at all points you can access the lake. And even of course, some of the houses have our lakefront. So these are kind of examples of how landscape and architecture are integrated. So I'm showing you some of the revenue generating uh, pieces of the real estate. Um, But now we're going to see something really unusual. As I said, because it's on this very famous lake, it is important uh, that we take maximum advantage of it. You have seen earlier some of the uh, paths that cuts through, cuts through to the to the to the waterfront. At every at any point, there are always these uh, moments you can see out into the lake. And on the lake, this yellow thing is a floating pontoon-like boardwalk. And at the end of that is a community farm where local residents can have uh, rent a plot and they can do their own um, farm uh, 
growing of crops. This is the, the, the boardwalk and actually it floats and it, it's, it rises and falls with the, with the lake's um, tide. And these are the, the plots that the, the local uh, owners can have. So now we're going to the, the village. And so you've seen this part. And these are the uh, smaller uh, houses, the much more affordable, it's two stories. And then these are the apartments. And these apartments are the ones where you can actually start thinking of, about, you know, crossing various price points. Um, and also thinking about the, the mix of, of population. So the, some of the freestanding houses may be suitable for families. And then the families may incorporate uh, across the intergenerational kind of um, scenarios, but also there might be times when grandparents might want to be nearby and they don't want to uh, stay. So these apartments or the little houses could be for, for, for relatives. And also, I always feel that the cost of real estate is always, you know, the dollar per square foot, the bigger the, the space, the more expensive. So why do we look at different kinds of configurations where a two bedroom could be a small two bedroom or a big two bedroom or medium sized two bedrooms. And depending on your needs and your pocketbook, you can actually live in the same building with different sizes. So these I'll talk about later, show you some plans. As I said, this is a, the town hall slash conference center, the arts and craft showcase, uh, the hostel, the you know continuing ed or life learning and uh, children's. And then this is the uh, performing center. So let's look at the apartments. So the, the apartments are actually raised on pilotes. And this is outside of the apartments. And uh, because because of the lake and the view, it's always it's in, the, in the size of the village. We just feel that it would be good to, to have the apartment raised so you can always see out and also do not look right into the houses. And, and, and the landscape and in, under the piloti are either uh, water or earlier, as you can see, uh, a kind of allusion to, to Suzhou's tradition of rock gardens, a rock garden. And then the wonderful thing about this project is that we go went very granular down to furniture. So this uh, tete-a-tete uh, is a chair in the lobby so that you can eat someone who wants to wait for the elevator or you're waiting for a car to pick you up, a cab or whatever, that you can always look at the right direction. Um, on the second floor, so here it is, we have a very small two bedroom to a regular standard size two bedroom to a very regular size one bedroom. And there are studios, but I'm not gonna go into that. So there are studios, one bedroom, small one bedrooms, large two bedrooms, small two bedrooms. And depending on your, your affordability, you can you know all cohabit in the same building. And all buildings always have an outdoor space, something uh, I think is really essential to have fresh air and to, to actually have the sensation of being outside. So this is a, the, um, it's a model apartment for the large size apartment. There's a model apartment for the small size apartment. And this is a kitchen for the very small, and there's a very small kitchen for the smallest two bedrooms. And of course, with that, those balconies, you can always look out to the lake and to the views. And those are the small uh, townhouses down below. Um, so this shows this location is the Performing Arts Center, which is this. And it's a kind of a beacon 
for it. So it's a very kind of simple uh, thing. Well, I could have speed through this because I think I'm running out of time. Uh, and then this is a creative uh, craft and, the, and this shows the first inaugural exhibition, which is actually pictures taken by some uh, uh, a, a local uh, uh, person of the construction. He came before he bought a piece of property in our place, he took pictures of our site in construction. And so we welcomed him to show the photography of all the workers that worked, produced his, his current home. Uh, this is, uh, of course, uh, the town hall slash conference center. And here, we actually, the one thing that we did is that is to put actually video screens on all the walls so that at any time you can change. And so quite often, you know, people have parties there and, and, and fundraisers, for example. And, you know, why waste money on decoration? All you have to do is buy a program and you can be either on a mountaintop or in a forest or anything that your heart's imagination. And it could be a, a meeting like this or, a, you know, a banquet. So this is the continuing learning. And so this is the entrance and it goes to, because of uh, economics, we feel that, you know, we have to, we spend all that space uh, building uh, expensive homes to make money for the school. So the school goes downstairs to the lower level, but we actually play with topography so that in fact, that, the public square is on the lower level. And uh, and from, this is also seen through the lobby of the hostel, but you can, the hostel is connected to the school down below. And you can see it. And then this is looking back up at the, the hostel's lobby and reception area. Um, at the same time, I just wanna go through with this program is that there's enormous amount of parking for for functions. So there's an entrance from the parking and then and then a staircase coming down from upstairs. This is a uh, lecture hall and series of meeting rooms uh, and then a, da a, a dance dance studio. Then up upstairs is the art uh, ceramic studio, painting studio and music studio. This is the entrance from the garage. We always feel like gar garage entrance is always an afterthought. So we really celebrate. And the interesting thing that we found talking about technology is th this was done about 10 years ago already. Um, every time you walk under this, it's actually responds to your, your movement and the lights change. So bringing some of the movement of transportation into, into the more static architecture of the arrival. And then this is a, the, the reception of the school. And then these are some of the entrance to the rooms. See, this is some of the uh, classrooms, which actually has natural light coming through from the uh, public spaces above. This is the lecture hall where you can actually have joint programs from a variety of different universities and, and schools. And then this is the um, the hostel. And the hostel is unusual because we actually uh, modeled it after a program developed by the Harvard Business School, which is that you have clusters of people living together, but they have shared common space. Now this is the lobby, and the lobby is typical uh, we work style. You know, we've got a bar and lounge and a long library tables. And then, of course, able to always be visible to the school and then have special kind of um, private meeting spaces when you can just in the ground floor where you say, hey, let's get together, have a conversation. You can close the door to this. And you know, it's just like a large phone booth, if you will. Look from the outside. And here's upstairs. So it's saying on stairs, there's a communal space and then there are eight rooms and that it has its own kitchenette. 
And this is the, the common room. Kitchenette is back here. And uh, it's seen being used. And then these rooms are really tiny, but it has all the functions of, uh, and hardware too, of the more fancier, the, the fancier hot, uh, hotel on the other side. We we got Vola for all the for all the hardware uh, fittings, so they can't complain. Um, so now we we go to uh, oh these are the um, actually the apartments is accessible through the park their parking, so you can go for security purpose. They can go straight from their car car parking space to their house apartment. This is the common uh, you know, town square, if you will. It's actually a sunken plaza and it goes down to a food, a large food hall. Uh, so I'm gonna talk about the food hall. The food hall, again, we're always working for inside outside. So we brought uh, a, a kind of garden into the inside since it's in it is and still in the basement and um and you know it's it serves a variety of different cuisines and and is broken down to several different zones um you guys have known enough about town these food halls so there's not much um, not much innovation other than to create create a sense of Break down the 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 scale of a, a food hall so that it doesn't feel like uh, a food court. And this is the plaza. And we also devised these sort of temporary structures that you can take um, set up or take down for special events. And this is the food hall. These are the apartments. This, this is the um, town hall slash conference center. Conference center. This is the life learning and, and hostel. And back here is the um, arts, and, arts and craft gallery. And actually this is in principle the arrival for the this little town town center. Some views. And we we actually make good use of these uh, tented spaces. Evening views. And this is the performing center. That's the art gallery. And these are lots of outdoor kind of public spaces, seating, uh, water works. So now we go to um, the this this um, uh, retreat uh, wellness retreat. Now this wellness retreat has many components. On the ground floor, this is the arrival. You come in through here, reception, and this is uh, a town. A tea, a tea room, it's food services. The, the entrance into the wellness retreat down in the lower level, circulation, um, more meeting rooms, uh, health center, and then outshoots of the health center. This is a med meditation room. This is an outdoor treatment. And this is actually a swimming pool but it also has treatments in it, like water jet treatments and um, a lot of water, uh, water massages, flotation and so on. And these are bungalows, three bungalows uh, that you can rent. So they're, we jokingly call them the honeymoon suites. And then this is the um, medical center. And the medical center has two components, two parts, one which is a wellness, uh, and the other one, of course, is disease control, so two separate things. Uh, so let's talk about the arrival. Sujo has famous for these scholar rocks. They were rocks that been 
see, uh, planted by previous generation for uh, for centuries, they would put rocks into the bottom of the lake, and their and their descendants, two or three hundred years later, will actually come and harvest them. And, and this is a very large one, but usually there are desktop size, and they would be used. And this it's it's a very kind of metaphysical. Uh, it's a spiritual gesture of contemplating nature and the forces of nature um, and looking at these stones that have been washed by by the currents of the lake. So we we managed to locate this enormous one, which we set as a kind of arrival welcoming symbol. Um, I usually think that, you know, sculpture is kind of pretentious, but um, but we thought to have some visual uh, symbol that that addresses the the history of the the region might be uh, a good ex um, exception. So this is the entrance. Uh, of course, then you have a reception, and we're able to work a lot with local uh, artisans who create furniture such as these or using old traditions of um, paper uh, parasols that are no longer really functional and given a second life as lampshades. Uh, the lobby. And then let me show you this, which is, here it is, the, 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 the tea lounge, the view of the lake. And then this is the food services, where, of course, the kitchen is, on, of course, center of, of, of the operation. And now we're going to go just take a look through various scenarios of the public spaces. and bringing, integrating outside and inside. And that porosity from the inside to the outside is very important. And, uh, and here is the, now we go to the, uh, wellness clinic with its own entrance here. It's reception and, well, they're just medical rooms, but they, they actually look at both, but China has an uptick of, of diabetes, for example, because of new diets. Um, a lot of new diseases there before were not apparent. And so there's disease prevention uh, control. But there's also the disease prevention, which is more the Chinese tradition of keeping yourself well uh, so that you don't get sick, you know, through herbs and exercise and so on. So the clinic also addresses that part of it. And so now we go upstairs to the rooms. Again, bringing greenery into the inside. Uh, and of course, I'm having a little fun with carpets and lanterns and things on my downtime when we're not working on the building and the interiors. And here in this room, because this building is very long, uh, partially because we all the rooms want to have the great view of the of the lake. So it's a single loaded, hotel, which means it's very attenuated. And we have actually uh, bicycles and so on for people to use to uh, to bring them to their rooms um, and electric carts and so on. But then the corridors, they, I also you know encourage people to get their 8,000 steps and to walk the corridors. And to keep it from being kind of dreary, we actually put a different colored glass in every section. So also a good way 
a good way to uh, help you find locate your your particular area. So you're in the the pink section or the green section or so on and so forth. And the room the room is also inverted where the bathrooms and actually uh, at the at the front because in the end of the day you know you only the sleeping is you don't need to see the view. So we put the the in. in it's, we just sort of flip what what you normally do in hotels, and uh, and and because it's a, a wellness retreat, we encourage people to stay at least a weekend, if not more, because in order to take advantage of all the the services we give them. So these rooms are really almost uh, you know has to be well well equipped with with a proper desk, with the proper seating, and so on and so forth. Now to the, the the real treatment area. So this is all in the lower level. As I mentioned earlier, there was a, a area that you go down from the ground floor, and this is where you come down, and that's uh, surrounded by reception, and then a again another eating uh, component. It's a ki uh, ki kitchen, uh, and a these are different areas. A bookstore to talk about wellness. And then, and I guess that's a gift shop, if you could call it that, which sell, sh sells you all the paraphernalia that you might have yoga mats and, and, and medicine. There's a, a kind of a, a pharmacy in there. And then you have consultation rooms with, with doctors and then a library where you can sit there and research some of the things that you've been told. And then you take off your shoes and you go down this long corridor to either the men's changing room or the women's changing room. And both of them have treatments in there, like sauna and steam room and water jets and, 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 and the resting lounge. Um, in the men's, there's a barbershop. In the women, there's a, a area for you to do manicure, pedicure. It's pretty luxurious, I have to admit. Uh, and and then and then you go and do after or then you're led to these treatment rooms of your you know um, different modalities um, Ayurvedic Chinese Tui Na Swedish this I won't go into it but there were like 25 of these rooms um, and then after that you can actually come in and peruse this uh, relaxation area where there's a huge pool with, again, different treatments. Like uh, these are, um, I can't remember the name of it now, where you you are actually floated by a therapist uh, um, in zero gravity. Uh, there's a children's uh, equal, you know, um, paired with a children's water uh, therapy. And then there's a, again, a resting area and a cafe. Um, there is a foot reflexology thing called Kanaib Walk. There's a hammam, there's more massage. There's mud treatment rooms. There's a, of course, steam room, sauna, and a Tibetan uh, salt treatment. Uh, and then individual resting capsules and so on. Uh, you can also take a stair to go outside, which I'll talk about later. So here's a, the, the way to go down to the, the wellness retreat, the, the treatment areas, and then come down. You can either walk down or you know, also walk down rather than take the lift elevator. And then these are all the public spaces where you wait for your therapist or your doctors, or and this is the library where you can go and do some research on your laptop. That's where you take off your shoes and then go down this long um, corridor. This is one of the uh, spaces in the men's um, changing room. And this is the main uh, pool with all these um, treatments as well in there. And this is the children's version. 
And there we actually, uh, these are the children of a lot of our workers, which we took pictures of. So they, they are kind of memorialized um, in, in the project that they worked on. Hammam, salt treatment room. And this is a path to this little hole that goes into this meditation on dome. It's, it's interesting because you can actually, uh, it, it's perfect dome. So when you whisper on one end, you, the other person can hear it the other end. And so there's a sound therapy room in there too, other than using meditation. And it's lit by a skylight. And we also have these kind of saunas. These are infrared saunas, so it's not very hot. And you can uh, rest and it's actually on the water. You can look out into the lake. And that outside is of course, and then you can also take all the treatments outside to the while you're looking at the, the view. And so those are lounge chairs and these are uh, jets. And that's what you we're looking out onto in the sauna. And that's the the retreat. Different is the that's where the sauna is. And then of course these these are this is the 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 gym and this is the meeting rooms and then the the tea tea lounge and the restaurants all surround that. And you know it's, it's wrapping around this circular pool. So, so this this is kind of a paradox because it looks very luxurious, um, but what what it, we're trying to point out is that is that we have to deal with the realities of economics. How to actually trying to laminate uh, profit with service, and this is a I think one most important takeaway is that uh, all these functions both benefit both the community that it serves, but it also becomes an engine for them so that they can actually keep their community intact and, and sustainable. Calvin, this is amazing. I mean, you've given us a richness from urban design to landscape design to, to everything in between right down to the kitchen. And I think your your title, creating the uh, the context for a new community, it's I don't know, it's the context that you've invented that is so magical. Um, I, I, it's just a perfect title for what you've shown us tonight. Just well, th thank you. Well, I have to say that I just want to mention my personal journey and how I got here. You know, between Berkeley and Harvard, I went to um, Carnegie Mellon to study theater for I didn't, I don't put that in my CV because, you know, people think it's very confusing, but that's the best thing that I did because it humbled me. It taught me about humanity, you know, because when you, when you study Greek tragedies and Roman comedies and Ibsen and Chekhov and Shakespeare, you begin to understand what makes human beings, humanity tick and where our tragedies are and where is our strength. And where is our Achilles heel? And then, of course, as you know, we we are pretty um, polyamorous when it comes to <laughs> our uh, interest in design. So, you know, we started out doing urban projects, and then we deep dived into dove into retail for a good ten years, and then we went to, you know, into this area that we share with you, which is food and beverage. So, you know, then, you know, you learn from people, you know, you learn about consumerism, material, materialism, and, but you also learn about aspiration and dreams and identity, which is what, you know, to me, fashion and all that's about. You own things to 
that you think that will define you. Of course, it doesn't really um, always, sometimes. Uh, but you know that the price you pay for, for borrowing these things to define yourself. And, and, and how do you expand your sphere of, of how do you learn to, def, you know, how to find yourself, you know, beyond materialism and beyond, beyond all that. But you have to kind of experience it before you realize it. Been there, done that, eh, you know. <laughs> you know, pick what is really the pieces that may be useful uh, and put it in a new context. And, and and make it work. And so, you know, we're, we're, we're not, we don't judge, everything has its reason. So, you know, that's what wake us ticked, right? Uh, consumption and production and all that. So let's make, see how we can use that and put it to, to better use for our communities. So that's the takeaway really. Such a, it's a great example for our students, for anyone. Um, wonderful example. I think you've shown us how you've woven that into places to live and places to be, which is very special. Um, I also just have to just add that your connecting spaces in both projects are, are one of my favorite spots. And one of the hardest things I think to do Harking back to my interest in uh, Herman Hertzberger for creating those mm. interstitial spaces that people forget about. But in, in your case, those are some of my favorite spots. Like I want to take off my shoes and walk through that hallway. Oh, um, you, you just made my day. Yeah. Because well, I you. admire Hertzberger and I, I totally believe it's places when you're not paying attention that's the most important because you are, you're, you're not reading it, you know, it, you, you, don't, you don't have preconceived notions of what should be like a restaurant, I percept, you know, you have preconception, uh, what a room should be, this. but, you know, from getting from A to B, A to Z, you know, you, you, you're not so critical, but that's when you can catch people uh, right. and make them sense things. So thank you very much. Right. Well, so thank you so much. Let's applause.